I sort of pride myself on having played a lot of emotionally affecting games. I mean, I talk about Silent Hill 2 pretty frequently, so I think that's a fairly good indicator of the kind of games I enjoy discussing and thinking about. However, there are a lot of games that I simply don't feel like I can play at this point in my life. I find this topic of conversation really fascinating as it's one often not discussed. Gamers as a whole aren't really concerned with the feelings and sensitivity art can instill. It's a very mechanically minded community due to many cultural factors that I don't feel I have all the time to get into today. So let's talk about just a few games I feel as if I can't play and why I can't play them. Let's start this exploration with games that aren't particularly heavy to talk about. First person games. First person games make me very motion sick so I usually can't play them for long periods of time. A notable exception is Pathlogic, because feeling like I'm going to throw up really contributes to the feelings that game is trying to evoke from me. I'm not entirely sure why first person games make me so nauseous, but it's a reason I haven't played several popular games that might be worth my attention. For example, Half-Life or Portal. While I doubt either of those would be personal favorite games, it's sad that I'm missing out on them because they're big parts of the gaming conversation. It doesn't help that many people I know who I discuss games with love those series. However, you didn't come here to listen to me complain about migraines. You came here to hear how triggers affect your perception of a game since you're too scared to play said game in case it causes an actual breakdown. While I feel the game Needy Streamer Overload could fit into this category due to how it depicts borderline personality disorder, the more distance I gain from that game's release, the less I feel that way. It seems, um, rather silly as an experience ultimately. I don't even know if I'd like it anymore. I won't focus on that much other than saying, yeah, living with BPD is really scary sometimes. With that being said, there are two large games from the past few years that I'm utterly afraid of playing, even though they both seem like masterpieces. Lisa is the first game I should talk about here. I don't really know much what happens in it, seeing that I haven't played it. It's critically acclaimed by almost everyone I talk to about it. However, the ideas it touches on, the graphic discussion of sexual assault, I just don't think I could handle it. Perhaps at a later point in my life I could, but as it stands right now, I could barely handle Silent Hill 2, which is much more vague in its comparisons, barring a specific scene toward the end. I'm not sure how much of it is even in Lisa. The thought just terrifies me. So, it's interesting to exist in a space where I'm too scared to play a game and form a conviction, an observer on the outside. All I can go off of are my boyfriend's words about the game's quality. From a game that I have a vague understanding of to a game that I have an all too intimate understanding of, He Fucked the Girl Out of Me is a game that I don't know if I could ever play because of how utterly real it is. Lisa is a game that I know none of the contents of, really, besides what I have been told by others. He Fucked the Girl Out of Me, however, is an autobiographical visual novel about being a transgender sex worker. I don't think I could handle that in the slightest. The few lines that I've read from the piece just through the osmosis of being a games critic have already upset me to the point of tears in some instances. It seems like it's a beautiful and phenomenal game though, and I'd love to dig into it at some point. I just don't think I'm really ready at all right now. There are a few other games that I would love to play, but I don't think I'm ready for. Lots of other bitsy and twine based games that are incredibly personal and visceral experiences. Ultimately, however, I just wanted to highlight how interesting and unique this phenomenon is as opposed to any specific games. Being able to appreciate games without interfacing with them, to understand them only as they've been discussed to you by others is something that I've gone through a lot in my life. From games that I simply couldn't afford as a child, to auto-fictional breakdown inducing pieces that make me feel like death. There will always be games I can't play, and it's interesting to see how I view those games I can't play. I'm often extremely charitable with them, like in the case of Lisa. I have no idea how well its ideas are portrayed, but I haven't met anyone with a complaint about them yet. It's hard for me not to be charitable. But then again, with Half-Life, I sort of just assume I probably wouldn't like it, even though I have no way of knowing. After all, they're both games I haven't played. It's a fundamentally different experience to playing the game. It is knowing the game, but in a completely different way. And is that not its own artistic experience as well? The experience of knowing without playing, the experience of experiencing without experiencing. Isn't it also interesting to discuss that? This has been Arcade Everlasting, the bitter old witch who hates fun video games, signing off. Thank you for watching.